Hi everyone and welcome along. Now a question I get asked an awful lot is how to look after your watercolour palette. Now whether you are of the thought that you should clean your palette after every single use or if you prefer to hold on to all those wonderful washes and colour mixes that you collect in the palette whilst painting, either way it's a really good idea to give your palette some TLC from time to time. Now mine is used every single day, it's a really hard working watercolour palette so it's the perfect specimen to have a look at some of these ways to just give it a little refresh. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right so here is my palette. Whenever I start filming I, I always clean the wells beforehand because I think it's helpful that you see my mixes go in clean. But the rest of the time, uh, I hold on to the mixes. I, I think it's quite useful. Um, but essentially, this palette in general could do with some tender loving care. So a few things we're going to look at. Firstly, we're going to look at cleaning the, the larger sections, seeing if we can get rid of stains and things. The other thing is I'm a very messy painter and a messy person. And at times, I've put bits of acrylic paint into the palette, which has not come away so we're going to look at how we sort of ease those off. I'm also going to look at how to clean up paints that have been contaminated like that which is another trait of a rather messy painter and then the other thing is the paints themselves and the wells. Now these are paint that's been placed directly into the wells. It's not like, here's another messy palette coming up, not like um, half pans which can just be slotted in and out of a palette these ones it's going to be a bit trickier if you want to actually replace the paint so we're going to look at how to do that and then last off um, if you live in a house with furry four-legged friends you are probably going to accumulate a lot more dust and dirt and hair in your palette however well you try and keep it close it always gets in there so we're going to look at that as well um, tools I've got I've got some really old tufty brushes that I do not mind getting a bit rough and ready with I've also got a very smart looking butter knife but the main thing about this is it's a knife that does not have a really really sharp edge on it I've got some tweezers and then lastly I've got my um, scalpel my artist scalpel now this is extremely sharp and should only be used either under supervision if you're under 18 or just with great care and uh, knowledge so please please if this is a new thing to you please do not resort to it it's just going to be for the really really tricky things um, so do make sure that you're using tools safely so the first thing I'm going to do is I need to just wake up the palette in general water is our friend with this you know watercolor is a wonderfully light translucent medium it is easily washable um, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to put each palette just under a running tap and what that's going to do is it's just going to take off sort of the superficial top layer but most importantly it's going to wet everything and just make it much softer and much more easy to work with by wetting it under the, a running tap, so the tap's just like the water's running over both the paints and the well, but no brush, nothing sort of trying to dislodge anything. It, what it's doing is it's just taking off a super, superficial top layer. And now I've got some, well, I've got a load of things. I've got some rags, I've got some kitchen roll, um, various cloths, and I've also got a jar of clean water. And I'm gonna begin by doing the easy part. I'm going to clean up the empty wells are not wells open palette bits with the with the sort of wash sections however you can see I've got some much heavier thicker cloggy bits and if I started to just wipe those up we're going to get quite smeary so what we're going to do is just focus on the nice superficial washes and then we will focus on any lumpy bits you've got so by just giving a little sort of buff and a shine with any kind of sort of kitchen cloth you've got has really made a big difference. And if you just need a little bit, just a little bit of water will really help clean that right up. But there are some more awkward bits. So the one thing I did find was I sort of was rubbing away at this and, and some of the bits of acrylic paint just kind of came off which is awesome because of course it is a water-based paint as well 
Um, so, you know, after just a little bit of a slightly more forceful rub, you will get bits off, but they're always going to be, see, look, see, like that, just a little bit of slow and methodical wiping away. This is only really for the, the people like me who are a little bit naughty with their palette and, and put other things in it other than watercolour. Um, I've also got some metallic watercolour stuff up here. It's like a, like a metallic ink, which again is like an acrylic based thing. It's going to come off eventually. It's just with a little bit of elbow grease. So we can see that those will come off. However, something a bit more stubborn. I like to use the butter knife or it's basically a palette knife isn't it because it's coming off now the good thing about this palette is any scraping of the surface of the palette that I do is okay because when we prepared the palette and I've actually got a YouTube video all about this we actually scoured the surface to give it a bit of texture because we want the paint to sit happily in the paint wells and the other thing I can do is very easily pick up those awkward bits of paint because they've been much softened from having the watercolour palette run under the tap and then we'll just be able to get a clean wet cloth and start um. to clear those up a bit better. Gosh, this is looking better than it's done in a long while. Okay, so let's look at the actual paints now. So I was talking about the like contamination of the paints. So the yellow is a great example. It's always getting green shoved in it. So what I'm gonna do with a, with a wet brush is I'm going to begin to like remove that top layer. And now I'm not going to get any more color, I'm not, Sorry, start again. I'm not going to put my brush in the water. Again, I'm just going to allow it to sort of slowly dry and slowly absorb the color until I'm happy with that. The other thing is there's a whole load of rubbish up in the top here. Ugh, not very nice. I don't know, some of you might find this super satisfying. I find it a little bit gross, but that is my dog. My dog's hairs get everywhere in this house and my palette is not safe from it. So this could take a while, but essentially the tweezers are great for just removing any nasty little bits of rubbish. And then I actually think getting, there you go, clean wet bit of kitchen roll and just kind of scraping off little bits of excess because you can see I've got a little bit of acrylic in there as well so I'm going to use my usual technique a little bit of scraping then get the butter knife out and start to remove that nasty orange color that's there okay it's going well so far we've got a lot of the hairs out um, just sort of getting the paints cleaner. But there's another thing. Um, I recently bought a few new colours, um, some Daniel Smith watercolour, which I'm really excited to put in. And there's one or two colours I want to take out. Now that feels like a bit of a, like a risky thing, especially you saw earlier, this would be a much easier way of swap chopping and changing your colours. However, it's not impossible. So this colour down here, this cobalt violet, I want to replace it with this imperial purple so um because it's nice and wet what means is i should be able to aha, get the bulk of the color out and just get my little cloth get a clean cloth a bit of water and just start to clean that little pan up i've cleaned that one up as well now I will have to accept that I might not have my colours in the kind of order I really want, but it just goes to show that it is totally possible to remove colour if you want to replace colour.
colours in your palette. Just get them a little bit wet and get a butter knife or a palette knife, something like that, and gently ease underneath and you will get it out. So if you are refilling your palette with new colours, then it's probably a good idea to do a painted brand new colour swatch chart. I'm aware my hands are really filthy now. It might look like it's not too much of a messy job, but it, it seriously is. Um, so anyway, I'm just, uh, I'm just giving my new paints just a little massage, a little squeeze. So this is Imperial Purple for a Daniel Smith watercolour. Um, I am quite happy having a mixture of brands. I mainly use De La Rowney and Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolour, but I'm really excited to add these in. And actually, you can see my trip to um, Devon's newest independent art materials shop, Asta's Bookshop, in my latest YouTube short, so don't hesitate to go and have a little look at what I found in the amazing shop. Um, right, this is Mayan Blue Genuine. I'll pop it down in here. A little corner of blues down here. And then up we go. And I've got a uh, moon glow, which will be, I'm quite excited about that color. It'll be an interesting addition to my sort of shadowy mixes because it's got a slightly purpley tone. And then lastly, buff titanium, which was the first color I picked up. I just thought it looked totally gorgeous. Really interesting color. Whoops, that's made a, mess, made a mess again. Anyway, what's left to do? Well, if you really, really wanted to go to town, you could clean off every single little white bit of plastic there. But for me, mine is a working palette. It's gonna get messy. It's gonna get messy in the next video you see me do. So for me, this is a perfect way to have refreshed and given my palette a little bit of tender loving care, removed the hairs, Crumble and Lola, um, and yeah, it's good to go. I hope it's been helpful for you guys to, to see that you don't need all sorts of kit. I've seen, I was researching when I uh, was about to do this and I saw some people use olive oil, some people use all sorts of things. I don't really think you need much. There's another hair, my goodness. I don't think you need much beyond water a few cloths, some, uh, just a few utensils, and a little bit of elbow grease. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you again next time. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you found that useful and you're all set to get on with some lovely painting, so check out all our watercolour tutorials and our many playlists on the channel. I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons for their support, because that support enables us to keep creating videos like this that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.